good morning students in the uh, previous class we have discussed we revised the last two chapters chapter 1 and chapter 2 we have completed that those chapters all the exercises the details the query so far everything has been discussed and uh, assignments done homework given and uh, some of you have responded pretty well to the home assignments which were given to you still uh, i'm waiting for most of the students who are uh, who haven't uh, responded to the particular uh, homework or the assignments which have been given that is uh, you may ask that uh, assignments given respond in what manner manner means to respond uh, by doing it in your particular exercise books and uh, to submit your homework the, to me through by mails rather okay so still uh, some of you have responded uh, still a few haven't so I'll request those who haven't submitted their work Please do submit uh, the work by and uh, for corrections. Though I don't think corrections, uh, minimum corrections will be there because most of the questions or rather all the questions of the exercise have been discussed in detail so far. And along with that, uh, the non, uh, what should I say, the assignments which have been given to you, the homework, home, apart from the exercises, the home assignments which were given to you those assignments also the answers were also discussed uh, in detail along with exercise apart um, so i don't think the study materials have been provided so i don't think uh, by this time or rather till a uh, date from chapter one and chapter two you are having any doubts but still that's my uh, point of view, my perception. So, but still, if you're having any doubts, any queries, you may uh, send your doubts or queries through the school portal or through a personally, by, if you want to personally submit that one, the emails are there. So you can submit that one, not an issue. And uh, those doubts and queries will be taken care of, of course. And, uh, with proper reply okay so from now today I will be starting a new chapter I will be starting a new chapter that is chapter elements compounds and mixtures and this chapter is chapter 3 of your book now elements compounds mixtures to be very uh, what should I say with the last two chapters the last two chapters uh, involved less that means with now with more and more the chapters will progress with the syllabus we will come across we will now will start begin to taste the flavors of chemistry okay so with the introduction of the elements introduction of compounds and mixtures we are stepping we are stepping into the world more into the world of chemistry and we will be test we will be tasting the with slowly the different flavors of chemistry all right okay so let's start with the chapter as i said and as the topic said uh, rather as you can see that is the an interaction with elements compounds and mixtures all right now before discussing what is an element what is a compound because the, as you can make it out there are three different words elements compounds and mixtures but the, but before understanding the deep rather in detail what is an element or what is a compound or what is a mixture before understanding that one we have to first understand we have to first go back or rather go back means we have to first uh, what should i say focus what is the source what the general category 
of all these compounds are, or sorry, all these, well, rather, what, what should I say, individual components are. One is the element, compounds, and mixtures. There is a mother group, and from the mother group, there is the division takes place. The, from the mother group, the different branches stay, uh, rather uh, originate. And from the individual branches, we will come across these components of uh, the, that particular parent group. What's that group is? What's that mother group is? That is, in general, it's a very, very simple word, a very simple word. That is, substance. The very simple word, substance. This substance is, is the, what should I say? It, it is the mother or the parallelly, the, or, or, almost similar, or rather it's, it's the same thing. Substance is, uh, is another word for matter. So, we have in the first chapter, if you remember, the first chapter, we dealt with, we discussed about matter. Over there, what, what, the, what was the definition? Anything which we can touch, anything which we can feel or see or perceive by our senses, it's called matter. Similarly, similarly, over here, ma substance is a pretty closer, very, very closer word to matter. Pretty closer word to matter. What is substance? Now, first we need to understand this one. And I, I hope by this declaration that substance is pretty close or almost the same thing or rather, equi or rather a parallel word, word of matter. So we can have, by this time, you, I, I'll expect that you will be having a conception, an idea about what a substance is. So how a substance, now the term we need to define, what is a substance? Of in simple words, a substance is matter having specific properties and specific composition. That's matter, nothing else. Sorry, substance. So what's a substance? Matter having specific properties and specific composition is called a substance. Now, if we say, now there is a, that, that's the slight difference. That's the slight difference between substance and matter. If you, if, if you can just, really, if you can just think about it, if you can notice that it says specific properties and specific composition. There are matter which do not have any specific uh, composition. Specific properties are there, but specific composition, no, not always. Some cases, the compositions are not specific. Under such circumstances, will that not be addressed as substance? It can be addressed as substance, but, be, but sometimes it may not be. It may not be addressed as substance, but rather it will be addressed as a matter, state of matter. Okay? Now, what are the specific properties means? Specific properties mostly target the physical properties, followed by the chemical properties. Now, specific properties means specific, well-defined physical properties. That means density, it's well-defined. The viscosity, well-defined. Specific, well-defined melting point, boiling point, the volume, and the specific composition. That means by which atoms or which molecules or which, uh, what, what the uh, other sub, other things which are present specifically, specifically present. It's not that arbitrarily it will be present. No, it's not arbitrary presentation. It's not, it's, it's not present in an arbitrary manner. It has to be present in a very specific manner. In a particular ratio, in a particular volume, or any other, um, what should I say? 
um, any, any other uh, physical properties or other chemical properties also. So, but whatever it has to be, whatever it is, it has to be specific. That means well defined, clearly mentioned, clearly. There is no ambiguous, rather, uh, what, what, what should I say? There is no confusion or um, ambiguous results or uh, conclusions. That, no, this is something like this. No, not that. It's a very clear one. Okay? That's substance. For example, iron is a substance, water, oxygen, and there are numerous. I've just said it three. And as I said, etc. So there are numerous, numerous substances present in the world and around us. Numerous substances. Some more examples sugar, chlorine, gold, salt, sodium chloride, tri ice, that means solid carbon dioxide solid carbon dioxide, dry ice, ethyl alcohol, water, sulfur, sodium, oxygen. So apart from these, there, I have given you some more other examples of substances, but these are not the limited ones. Substances, almost everything is a substance. So the list is huge. It's enormous. Now, the next is we have we can classify substance. We can classify substance. What are the types of substances? Now, what are the classification? It's the pure substance and impure substance. Pure substance and impure substance. Okay, we will discuss about so later on. So about you know, pure substance and impure substance definitely in detail. Okay, coming now to the definition: what is a pure substance? As you can see, the question is given: what is a pure substance? Now, pure substance, it's not that there, it, 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 there is a one-line definition present or probably one-sentence definition present. The situation is, if a particular thing, it's a particular thing, it exhibits or follows the following, or rather follows and exhibits the following characteristics or features, then definitely it's a subs uh, sorry it's a pure substance the first is they have definite chemical composition pure substances will have definite chemical composition definite chemical composition the next is definite physical properties that means very well specified physical properties Spe that means uh, specific density that means clearly mentioned there is no confusion about the density of the substance conductivity of the substance the mm, volume of the substance the density of the substance the intermolecular availability uh, space availability uh, of the substance so the list goes on and that particular thing and the list goes on and the next is they are homogeneous in nature that is composition is uniform what is homogeneous what is homogeneous let's for example we have taken a piece of chalk or rather a, a piece of iron a, a piece of iron okay now this iron this iron is homogeneous that is if if this um, iron is melted heated or so 
under normal circumstances, normal air temperature, normal air temperature, the scenario of uh, the internal scenario of a particular thing remains, if remains unchanged, then it's a pure substance. So what's the criteria? The first is definite chemical composition. So we have to, so it's, it, there has to be a limitation or there are how many, um, what should I say? How many people can, can go for, or rather, um, a particular group? So based on that, based on that, if it's a group, and all the people are, are the same, that's, that means dressed up in a similar manner, or rather eating the same food, then that is called a homogeneous. So a particular piece of a substance, if it from the from the first one end to the opposite end, and from all the sides, from the base and the bottom and the top, from all the places, if the same or sa same atoms or same mm, substance, same things are present, it's called a homogeneous, called homogeneous in nature. It means throughout that particular thing, there is no what should I say? The uh, disparity in the mm, type of components or atoms or molecules or any other things. Right? There is no disparity. Everywhere, same thing. Examples: iron salt, water, all this stuff. Okay. Now, moving on to the next part, next thing, that we have discussed about pure substance. So automatically, if pure substances properties are being discussed, the next will come for impure substances. Now by the word itself, you can make it out that the opposite of pure is impure. Simple. Opposite of pure is impure. So whatever the properties of pure substance will be, definitely those properties need to be challenged, shouldn't be present in, within the substances which are categorized as impure. All right? Impure this word is the opposite. This word is just the opposite of the word pure substance. Now, if this pure, if this word, if the properties of the pure sub, that means opposite of pure. So whatever the properties of pure substances just now we discussed, that is definite chemical composition, definite physical properties and being homogeneous. So all these properties needs to be or rather should be challenged by the properties or rather challenged by the properties of the impure substance right okay so what is impure that means impure substances which are exhibiting the following characteristics what are they they are not having definite set of properties that means no definite set of physical properties specifically it means no specific density no specific melting point no specific boiling point no clear what should i say the composition so the um, no specific or uh, rather um, the fluidity so all these so these are the the conduct no definite conductivity properties so sometimes it can so it, it's it's not that sometimes it will happen and sometimes it will not so no specific it's not specific clear the second comes they are having the properties of the components by which they are made up of they are having the properties of the components by which they are made up of what does this what does this mean they're having this properties that means pure substance as we discussed 
is made up of only one type of substance. It's not one type of substance, one type of components, right? Pure substance is made up of only one type of components, same type of atoms, or same types of particles, or same type of one substance. So only one particular component is present and throughout from the start to the end, throughout the same component present. Right? If not, for example, if not the same component present, so for that reason, same component present, so the properties also becomes same. And for example, if <clears throat> now pure substance can also contain can also contain components or other multiple components can also contain multiple components but if those multiple components after they have formed the pure substance if those multiple components they are not showing their individual property rather they are showing collectively one particular property then it's a pure substance but this particular condition this particular case that is multiple components when they are present together they are not collectively forming rather collectively portraying one, one particular property rather if the multiple components are portraying their own individual property though they are present together hence they are impure substance clear i repeat once again that is for example pure substance is having two components they are made up of two components or three components but those th diff three different or two different components they are not showing their own individual property what they are doing they are displaying a common property okay whereas in impure substance if this this second point means in the impure substance if multiple components are present then those multiple components will not collectively display one or two or three common properties they will display their own individual property so the collective scenario does not come in the impure sub or other does not come in with the impure substance cases okay the third is impure substance can be homogeneous or heterogeneous in the previous pure substance what was there pure substances are homogeneous in nature but what about this they can be homogeneous impure substance can be homogeneous it can be heterogeneous also so homogeneous as well as heterogeneous homogeneous means throughout it is uniform same and heterogeneous means throughout the substance it is not uniform if one particular place or within the substance one particular corner is having high population of a particular component another side is having deficiency so this imbalance is creating a heterogeneous substance for example tap water tap water why tap water tap water contains a lot of impurities you have seen dust mud so all these things are present in tap water air in air air is a impure substance why because air it contains oxygen it contains nitrogen all the individual components are showing their individual properties rather 
instead of rather collectively displaying or portraying only one particular property of air, so instead of doing that, it, is, it displays nitrogen, it clearly displays its own individual property. Oxygen also clearly port displays its own individual property. Oil and water and so on. The next comes types. The question is types of what? Pure substances. Types of pure substances. So previously we started with ma matter. Then we classified matter into two segments. Matter segments are pure substances and impure substances. We discussed the properties of the pure substance. We discussed the properties of the impure substance. Now classification of pure substance. The pure substance is generally classified as elements and compounds. Two types of pure substance or classification of pure substance. One is the element, another one is the compound. For elements, so these are the classification. Now, elements examples, for example, gold and compound, water, ammonia, carbon dioxide, hydrogen peroxide, all these are examples of elements and compounds. Now elements can be further classified. Elements can be further classified, once again classification. Now elements can be further classified as metals, non-metals, metalloids. One point is still there, but I haven't included that one in the lecture. That is a part of the element only, that's, that's one of the element. So metals, non-metals, metalloids and inert gases. So pure substances, metals, non-metals, metalloids and in inert gases. Clear? The next is compounds, inorganic and organic. Now by the symbol itself, we can, those who are, those who are aware of this symbol, they will be easily, uh, you can easily make it out at what the symbol states, that is elements. So we will discuss about elements today. So today we will discuss about elements. The properties, the first one composed of only one kind of atoms or different or from different other elements. So of different are uh, different from other elements. So elements are elements contain any particular element it contains only atoms of the same element that means if an element name is hydrogen an element name is iron so iron will contain atoms of iron only and but the properties of those atoms will be entirely different from the atoms of sodium metal so based on the composition so the elements it contains one kind of atoms, but different from the other elements. Number two is made up of either atoms or molecules. So elements, either they're made up of atoms or either they're made up of molecules. So if they're made up of atoms, if they're made up of atoms, then there is a, a what should I say? The smallest uh, particle of a substance becomes matter made up of either atoms or molecules. Now, if it is an atom scenario, no problem. Molecules, multiple atoms, two or more atoms, combine together to form molecule. So, elements sometimes are made up of molecules also. For example, O2, oxygen, it's a molecule, but it's an, it's an element. Hydrogen, oxygen, it's an, uh, what should I say? So, all these things either, uh, goes with the atoms or molecules the next pure in nature elements elements are pure substances classification of pure substance elements so elements are pure substances the next is pure in nature that is either they are homogeneous 
or heterogeneous. Fixed melting point and boiling point cannot be broken into simpler substances. That means we cannot break atoms or rather we cannot break a substance much smaller than the uh, particular range. So smaller than the uh, or higher than the uh, EMI, uh, sorry, higher than the um, uh, bigger size particles, it does not give into uh, results into the po into a um, uh, positive uh, results into a positive simpler substance. But simpler substance means broken into small pieces, and after a certain point of time, when the division is becomes in impossible, then the division becomes impossible. Then still it can be broken. So the smaller the uh, substance, uh, it is. The, with, with the smaller uh, substance, substances, the uh, this uh, scenario of ele uh, elements is mostly prevalent. The next comes classification. The next comes classification of elements. As we said, elements are classified as metals, non-metals metalloids, inert gas. Metals, they are having luster. Luster means shiny surface. So substances which are, which are shiny in nature, they are, they are said to be having luster. Mostly solids, metals are mostly solids in nature. Ductile and malleable. Ductile means they can be drawn into thin sheets. And malleable, sorry, uh, malleable, they can be drawn into thin wires. So ductile means they can be drawn into thin sheets and malleable, they can be drawn into thin wires. For example, iron, then um, other components, these are all metals, metallic substances. The next, non-metals. Non-metals are having no last two, that means the other non-metals do not shine. Non-metals, they are, they can be solid or they can be liquid, but uh, Nonmetals are bad conductors of heat. Example, carbon, sulfur. Metalloids. They exhibit the properties of the both metals and nonmetals, and hence metalloids. Arsenic, silicon. Now, inert gases, they're chemically non reactive. We know that re reactive gases, for example, that means reactive gases means not really reactive, rather, but active gases. We, um, uh, for, they will not participate in any other chemical reaction. Neither they will trigger, uh, neither they will accept. That is for the chemical reaction. So that becomes chemically inert. Inert gases that are found in traces in our nature. For example, xenon is there, radon is there, argon is there. So with this, I'd like to stop with today's class. I'll hope that to go through this lecture and uh, for any queries, you are most welcome with your doubts. So thank you students.